Now, I've always had some mixed feelings about shells like this. Um, on one hand, it does cheapen uh, all the existing units that collectors or, or people like myself already have. Um, like, for example, I have this pretty cool Venusaur Game Boy Advance SP. It's, it's original. It is not in the best shape. It is very worn, but, you know, it's mine. I love it. But, you know, if a reproduction were to pop up on the market, like these Kyogre shells, you know, now, now everyone can get one, and it, it, it makes me feel worse about how much I spent on this. I mean, this one isn't the best example, because it really didn't spend that much. It's not in the best shape. But had I bought a nice, clean example of a uh, Kyogre shell, for, for instance, and then bought one of these cheap Kyogre shells, I'd have been disappointed, you know? But on the other hand, it does allow people like me, for example, who entirely too cheap and don't normally buy clean examples of these uh, expensive limited edition consoles. It, it allows people like us to, to get our hands on these consoles and play with them and, um, you know, at least pretend that we have something cool, I guess. Um, on that note, I did actually just buy a legit one of these consoles and this shell, uh, the legit console that I've purchased. Well, it's looking like I might've got scammed, but we'll see eventually when I get it. But here is what you get when you buy one of these. Now, to my knowledge, there are at least three different versions of this shell. I will link the one that I got down in the description, but the ones that other people have linked me appear to be completely different versions of the shell. I'll go into more detail in a minute, but what you get with your shell is these cheap plastic pry tools and really cheap Phillips and these tri-point screwdrivers, which are not the right screwdrivers for the job, but okay, good enough. I'd rather use my own screwdriver. But let's see what you get. I gotta say, packaging is much nicer than, than what we usually get with this sort of thing. You get these newish, these look like a new mold compared to some of the old buttons here. Um, no, I don't have quite a few of them. But you can tell it because the font is completely different. These are the old style aftermarket, these are the new style aftermarket. They're fine. I mean, they're completely usable. They're just the fonts different. Uh, okay. Oh, comes with two sets of buttons. You get the dark gray and the light gray, both with the new font. But <laughs> isn't that logo the best? Isn't that just precious? <laughs> oh dear that one's not so bad but uh okay let's let's talk about why i went after this particular shell i wasn't after the experience i had with that kyogre shell i was just completely put off of these wanted nothing to do with them just to move on with my life oh that's interesting I didn't know that's how they made those. Yeah, uh, curved bumpers. I didn't know they just cut out the middle of even bigger bumpers. I mean, I guess that makes sense in hindsight. I just, I don't know. I didn't know that. Anyway, this is why I was interested in this particular shell. This is one of the new clear molds, except painted. So it's something that I don't think I have seen before. Um, I don't know if there are any other shells out there doing this. If there are, I haven't spotted them, but I don't know. Looks looks pretty interesting to me. Uh, it doesn't come with those new 
clear or not clear uh, glow in the dark button membranes it has these really tiny speaker holes you can probably use that to tell it apart from some of the other molds but I don't I haven't paid enough attention to the molds on this stuff to be able to spot that oh that is egregious that is a crying shame I can trim that and it'll be fine except that this is a clear shell oh well if you wanted my opinion of these things this thing is definitely going to skew that opinion because look at how bad that looks that is not great that is a darn shame I wonder if we can mix and match well, I mean I know we can mix and match but I wonder how it'll look if we were to mix and match this clear green here I mean it's all right but it's not what I was going for all right all right all right great now that's falling apart all right let's see how this thing handles let's get this put together tonight's donor is an AGS 101 Normally I use 001s for this with the, uh, I just use IPS backlit ones, but I feel a little bit frisky today. This is just, in, just been in storage, and um, yes, I did modify this console. I put black, black buttons in it because I, I, I like the contrast. I like the black buttons on the blue. And I put the black cover on because the original cover was just busted. Now this battery cover is not long for this world. I haven't actually done a video on this, but these pearl blue units, if you notice the plastic underneath the paint has this greenish, greenish tinge, you'll probably notice that the battery or the plastic itself is extraordinarily brittle. This is my only battery cover in this color, so I don't want to demonstrate that, but You've probably seen pictures of these shells just absolutely destroyed, completely shattered. Um, note the color of plastic. Just file that away under interesting information. Not much can be done about it that I know of because the plastic has gone through a change in structure. Still interesting nonetheless. Comes apart just like any other Game Boy. Because it is just a Game Boy. I don't know why I'm doing that. I just need to dump this out. All right, set this aside. We'll come back to that. All right, here's the hard part. Now, I've seen a lot of people just, you know, stick a screwdriver in here and jam these out, and that's fine if you're never planning on reusing this shell. I think I might reuse this shell, so I'd rather like to not destroy these. I'm gonna get a new spudger, actually. One that's nice and pointy, but I haven't been using. Brand new, nice pointy. I can dig it. All right. So my strategy is to just 
slide it back and forth between the edge of the rubber pad and the shell to try and get purchase on the side of the pad and then just keep going on the underneath the pad until eventually you can lift it up and the idea is uh, to not leave any marks on the pad itself or on the shell and you can definitely use a metal tool for this that will be significantly easier but you're significantly more likely to leave a mark on one or both like this pad I accidentally just chewed up the edge my, my tool bit in and left a mark right there I think I'll be fine that doesn't look like it'll be visible from the outside but I'll know it's there and it'll hurt me every time. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well, he's already taken this apart. He swapped out the rear cover. Why is he having such a hard time with these, getting these out intact? Technically, I never took this apart. Because the rear cover, or the LCD cover, was completely shattered, I was able to just push the screws through with the uh, pad still attached. So that's this is my first time taking this shell apart the uh, proper way. Or the uh, intended way. Huh. I must have ran out of screws because that middle screw is not the right screw. On AGS 101 consoles, all five of those screws are usually JIS. Um, I must have ran out of screws though, because that is definitely not a JIS. Alright. And there we go. Set that aside. So normally we would salvage these hinges for use in my new shell here, but let me uh, let me take a look here. See what we got. Ah, so we do need OEM hinges for these screw uh, hinge covers. So with these hinge covers, normally there are these two chambers in here, this open chamber on the bottom here, and then this um, sealed chamber right in the middle. These hinge covers are the clear style or the OEM style with that sealed middle chamber. The other aftermarket shells um, in other colors like silver, the opaque ones, the hinge covers, this second inner chamber is actually open so you can use aftermarket hinges. Now I'm not going to bother salvaging my hinges because I have a ton, but if we take a look at just for example an aftermarket hinge you can see on the top there there's that big old exposed rivet and that's why that second chamber needs to be open whereas on an OEM hinge it's nice and flush on top and we don't have to worry about that. So for this build, I'm going to get a left hinge and a right hinge, not that one, that one. I'm picking these two because they look nice and shiny and clean, well, except for that one, but it looked better than some of the other choices cover goes on like that. Now unfortunately they are giving us green hinge covers instead of the gray that this style shell is supposed to come with. Just gotta trim some flashing off here. So on these Pokemon Center style shells they're supposed to have these gray hinge covers but I guess we're going with green. 
So that's what it came with. There's a right hinge. Where's the rest of the shell? Let's open this pile. All right. I am still so tremendously bummed about that defect. get over it eventually, but I'm not going to stop bitching about it. Okay. So on the right we have the hinge with the white clips. That is the right hinge. Looks like one of my clips broke off. It should be fine. On the left we have the hinge with the black clips. Snaps right in, goes right together. No issues. Okay. Let's go ahead and get started with the screen. So instead of putting back the original backlit screen, the original AGS 101 screen, I'm going to try something new. All right. I'm saving this. I'm not just putting this in a box somewhere. Well, I am just putting this in a box somewhere, but I intend to put this back in an AGS 101. I'm not getting rid of this. I'm not putting it in an AGB. I'm not sending it to you because you need one for your screen or because you can't find one online. I'm keeping it. Trust me, we'll see it again. But before then, I want to try this screen that I picked up a while back and haven't done anything with it since that one quick video. Uh, this is that AGS IPS screen or that fake AGS 101 screen. I want to try putting this in a console and what better excuse than uh, this AGS 101 here. Um, now I do need a lens. I am a big fan of OEM style lenses over the aftermarket ones. Unfortunately, this one's a little bit dirty so we have to clean it up before we can salvage it. But just put a little bit of glass cleaner on a microfiber cloth. And that should be more than good enough to see if this thing is even worth bothering with. And it's a little scratched, but I think it'll be fine. It'll be just fine. Now, obviously, I don't give two shits about this screen that it's attached to, but the lens itself is fine. So I'm just going to peel it off. And I am just now realizing that the adhesive is attached to the screen itself. So I'm going to need more adhesive. All right. All right, fine. We'll come back to that. We need more adhesive. Um, hmm. I really want, I have to use adhesive. The, the screen has to be adhered to the lens, otherwise it'll rattle around in the shell. I don't want to use permanent adhesive in case I ever want to remove it. Ah, uh, shoot, but I don't think I have a choice. Okay, let's just go for it. What's the worst that could possibly happen? I'm going to use this stuff here. Yeah, that's long enough. I'm gonna cut it right down the middle. Well, not quite right down the middle. I 
An actual proper gasket would be best for this. But, you gotta work with what you got. And this is what I got. I'm just gonna put this all around the metal frame. I'm even going to leave that little bit of overlap because that's what will hold it in place when it's in the shell. It being the whole screen assembly. screwed it up. Good going, Mako. That's okay, there's more. I think I can actually use that whole thing. Probably shouldn't, but I can. There we go. Not perfect. Wee bit short. Good enough, though. Now, I could just use an aftermarket lens. Save me all this hassle. Could just use a glass lens, save me all this hassle. I don't want to do either of those because I like how the OEM lenses look. It's not a significant thing, but it's different enough. Where's that last piece? There it is. All right. Home free. Oh, this one's too long as well. Oh well. This one I think I'll actually trim short though. Not great. 
Okay. Okay. That was exciting. That wasn't even the hard part. God, I can't get this stuff off me. It's almost like it's sticky tape or something. There we go. I don't even have to clean this because I still haven't removed the protective film. That also means I can put my thumb right on the middle of the thing and it doesn't make any difference. All right, get this ready. Should come off even easier. And I fully intend on using this front light for something. So I need to put this down somewhere safe. Oh, that's a problem. Luckily, this isn't too difficult to line up. Can't even tell it's not factory. Give it the old factory spin. seem right but okay I'm just gonna use the same old screws with the correct screw driver Good enough for now. All right, now what buttons should I use? The black ones I was using, the dark gray ones, mm, against my better judgment, I'll go with the dark gray.
But I'm still using my original membranes. Oh god, that's not even an original membrane. What's wrong with me? How dare I? None of these are. I mean, I suppose it doesn't really matter if I couldn't even tell them apart, but... I also have a drawer full of original ones, so might as well go for it. Someone just got up. All right. Notice, unlike a normal IPS kit, there is no backlight control button. Oh, I forgot something, didn't I? Yep. that noise. It's the shell rubbing. Let me try and open it. It's not great. Okay, one more part. Bottom. done so many of these things before that I'm probably making it look so much easier than it really is. I'd recommend taking a look at some of my older EGS videos if you want me to walk through things. All right, this square nut is very important. It holds the battery cover on. It is directional. You see on the side face in the camera, there's this uh, chamfer, whereas on the other side, it's nice and flush. We want the chamfer down so that the screw has an easier time finding the thread. That goes right there. They're both set to either on or off, doesn't matter as long as they're set to the same thing. And then drop that down. Sid and drop it down. There it goes. 
I'm together that. <gasps> I can't believe I've done this. I forgot the LED light pipes. Well, at least I didn't get that far. There's only three screws to undo. This is not going together like a typical clear shell usually does. Those seem to... Uh, I feel like they go together a lot easier, usually. Not that anything in particular is going rough. It just... It doesn't... I don't know, something feels off. I mean, besides the obvious, that it's an aftermarket shell. There we go. Yeah, you can hear how not great that is. But let's try it out. Oh, let's put on the finishing touches first. Ooh, these ones are adhesive. These are usually not adhesive. <laughs> totally missed that. So this is uh, actually kind of concerning. These fit significantly better and look significantly better than any of the previous aftermarket uh, rubber thingies that I've seen. I mean, they, they don't match this shell at all. Like, they're just the wrong color. But... 
the reason that's concerning is because it might make telling reproductions apart from uh, legit ones, legit consoles, even more difficult. That looks absolutely terrible, but we'll go for it anyway. Got to complete the, uh, the image, right? Doesn't even sit flush, it's sticking up quite significantly. But that just makes removing the plastic film on it even easier, I guess. All right, let's try it out, screw it. So you can see I got the screen just a little bit off. It should have been up a little bit more. That's okay. Looks great, just like these IPS screens usually do. And my brightness control works because it's just passed through from the original console. I'll definitely need to swap out the lens. These buttons feel terrible. I was just saying in another video, generally, buttons are buttons. But every now and then I stumble across some that are particularly offensive. These are them. It is such a shame. Because this shell is... I really like this shell. Or at least I really wanted to like it. I mean, the screen kit itself is fine. It's exactly what I expected. It's exactly what I remember. But now I have a console that it's in so I can play with it and compare it to some of the other kits. But I wish I could say this console felt good, but it really doesn't. Um, I don't know what the heck happened with the molding, but you can see all the mold lines from the... Uh, from the inside, like you can see this little Y shape right here for the battery thing. See that through the shell. You can see these big lines where the cart goes in. I don't know what's up with that. It really doesn't look good. You can see it on this side too. Where the finish is just uneven. This is just hilarious. I love it. It's so bad. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess, I guess I can say if this is your jam, you really want one of these things, fuck it, go for it. But it's not great. Um, at least the stickers it comes with are new. These are the stickers these shells normally come with. But this one, this one's all fucked up. All right, like the model number is AGT, but it also says AGS001. Um, it should be, AGS001 is model AGS, whereas AGT should be AGS101. So this is clearly meant to imitate a 101 label, but they put the wrong model number on it. Also, battery, lithium ion AGS D03. Um, no. <laughs> Interestingly, this text is easier to read on the reproduction label than it is on the OEM one. This is a label I transferred over from a legit 101 that I had to sacrifice to the parts god. Jeez. I just cannot get... that 
That's not it. I swear I'm usually a lot better at this. Try and walk that over. There we go. It's there's so many details wrong. They could have done so much better. I literally just did this shell a few minutes ago. Well, I guess at this point an hour ago. And th this shell is completely fine. This one feels like factory bee garbage. Uh, when I did that Kyogre shell a while back, this thing, and I just felt the hinge on it, because this is an OEM shell just with the aftermarket top cover on it. When I felt the hinge on that shell, I just practically threw it out. This one feels like basically the same, but not, not quite as bad, because I can actually open and close it. But you can see my hinge doesn't actually snap. It just, it's because it's too tight. I mean, maybe it'll break in. Who knows? But I really want to like it. I thought it would be cool. Now, I'm, I can't actually compare it to an OEM one yet, hopefully. I do have one of these on the way, I hope. I have something on the way. Whether it's legit or not still remains to be seen. Um, the reason I say that, it, the pictures were legit, but the uh, I found four other listings with the exact same pictures, so it's uh, a little nervous about that. But that's another topic for another video. I would have liked to see, um, you know, maybe it came with some reproduction stickers to throw on there. That would have been nice. I gotta double check which way it goes around. I, I thought it went like that, but it, I think it would make more sense like that. But, so I'm not gonna stick that down just yet because these are actually kind of hard to find and I don't want to waste them if I don't have to. Uh, and yes, I'll throw a link to these in the description. They're Taobao though, so good luck. Um, but yeah, I'll throw a link to this in the description if you want to check it out. I don't, I don't like it. I'm gonna take it apart, swap out the buttons because these are just fucking garbage. And I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. Maybe I'll put my uh, Nintendo DS SP in there. That is completely dead. Uh, yeah. Okay. I think I don't think I can say anything else more that I haven't already said. So catch y'all next time. Thanks for watching.